This is Scott Spears, and certainly today, this day of January 2014, will go down in history as one of the coldest days in the history of Ohio. But to check on that, we're going to check in with somebody who certainly knows something about the weather. You watch him all the time on WCMH Channel 4 out of Columbus. He is a meteorologist legend in Ohio, Ben Gelber. Ben, how you doing? Hey, Scott, you're too kind, but thanks. And after 33 years now, I've been through a few of these, and you've been through a few of these Arctic outbreaks. Uh, but this one is definitely the coldest in two decades, uh, just about 20 years. Th that's what a lot of people have been asking me today. What records have we broken? Well, we haven't broken a uh, daily record uh, for places that have really long-standing records. The daily record is uh, set back in 1884, for example, in Columbus. It was around 20 below. Uh, but for sh areas that have short-term records, like Marion, or at least that maybe only go back in the 20th century, uh, with the current reading of minus 12 at 9 o'clock, and maybe another degree or two, uh, this most likely will be a daily record. Uh, wind chill has been running up around minus 37 in the past hour, along with a few snow flurries. We will bottom out uh, over the next few hours pretty much where we are. The core of the cold air is right on top of us. Now, we could set a record for the calendar day tomorrow. Uh, January 7th. We'll have to look that up, though, and uh, because that record may be a little more attainable. But this has just been extraordinary. In January 1994, you may recall, we did have temperatures down around 15 to 25 below zero and even lower in southeast Ohio and wind chills close to 40 below. So I think we're going to go with the coldest since, and I do remember, 1994. And that lasted longer. OSU was closed for days on end, not just a day or two. Uh, that was an extraordinary cold week. And then and if you want to go farther back, uh, the winters back in January 1982, Christmas Eve 1983, and January 1985 were at least comparable, if not colder. But still, this is uh, about as cold as it gets in our parts. Ben, I want to get a couple questions in. I know it's a very busy time for you, but in a tin-type fashion, what happened? Essentially, uh, we talk about the polar vortex, uh, which is the huge mass of cold air, and there's a block out in the Atlantic, and, and everything just came together where that cold air received a push, and it, rather than going east or east-southeast, it just dropped south like a bowling ball. And that brought, in this case, the conditions were ripe to, to bring uh, a kind of a free shot. Uh, it has to do with the configuration of the jet stream. It's kind of complicated, but everything came together to allow that bowling ball of of the uh, core of cold air, which has been building up for quite some time. I mean, you have some winters where this pattern happens, but it doesn't get nearly this cold because the air to our north isn't this cold. But the extensive snowpack in Canada, this cold air is built up for quite some time out of the North Pole, and it just finally the conditions were right to just let it come crashing south. And this air mass being colder than most that we see reaching our latitude. Uh, but it, it will be in and out in a couple of days. I mean, by Wednesday, we'll see temperatures getting back in the 20s and then the 30s, Thursday and the 40s, Friday. It's going to go up about 10 degrees a day. So we'll make a good recovery, but still frigid on Tuesday with temperatures tomorrow struggling to get to maybe 0 to 5 in the afternoon after starting off 10 to 15 below zero. Wind chills tomorrow, minus 20 to minus 30. Just a shade better, but not much. But we will see wind slowly diminish and temperatures begin to come up late in the day. By Tuesday night, Wednesday should be a lot better. Ben, a lot of people have said to me that uh, this winter's already been a little rough. Uh, is this going to continue? Well, it looks like we're going to get a break. There often is a relaxation after one of these major blasts. In other words, we kind of exhaust uh, the cold air supply for the for a short term. But I said in my story back in mid-November on my winter preview that with with the vast snowpack in Canada that we were kind of in for it um, and just would take the right you know dip in the jet stream. Sometimes that cold air remains bottled up. Uh, yeah, we've had plenty of cold air to our north before that hasn't made it all the way down. But this winter had. Uh, for various reasons, we talk about El Nino or La Nina. There weren't other factors that would limit you know, the the opportunity for that cold air to come south. And some of it is just uh, in my situation, it was just based on instinct, having uh, followed weather for all these years. It looked like we were going to get hit hard. And then storms tend to follow those Arctic boundaries. We narrowly missed a snowstorm yesterday by not too many miles. Uh, far western and northern Ohio got clobbered in Indiana with a foot of snow, but that wasn't meant to be for us. Fortunately, we'd have all that blowing around to go with this bitter air.
Then one more quick question, and maybe the most important. For a whole generation of Ohioans, this is the coldest weather they've ever experienced. If you do have to go out and work or go outside in the next 24 hours, what should you do? Well, you know, obviously we recommend not going out at all, but I realize some people have to get to work. Um, and as you said, at least for the younger folks, uh, those in their early 20s or teens, uh, you know, this is a first-time experience with 30 and 40 below wind chills. You, a number of things. You've got to dress in layers, uh, which goes without saying. Um, but you also you can't have any part of your face or hands exposed for more than a, a couple of minutes. You can actually get frostbite in five or ten minutes. So you know if you skip the hat or the gloves, that that could be disastrous. Um, and uh, and then you have to seek medical treatment if you begin to lose feeling in, in uh, your extremities or see a change in color or worse if you're disoriented. Uh, yeah, I mean that's not something to, to fool around with. Hypothermia and frostbite are both uh, serious risks when wind chill factor gets in the 25, 30 below range, we're, we're already there, or air temperatures uh, get in the 10 to 15 below range. So it is, it is very serious and requires uh, caution. Pets can uh, suffer from frostbite. They should be protected on the short walks uh, with some kind of sweater and just keep it short. Um, and, it, and if you have respiratory or heart ailments, uh, it's really asthma. It can be very difficult to, to breathe in this kind of weather. So if you just kind of wait it out, it means uh, spending time indoors until things moderate 24, 36 hours. Uh, that's what I would recommend. Same as when we have extreme heat waves and we get people to kind of slow down a little bit and be careful. But uh, on top of that, you know, it's, this is just a, a physically, well, we're not accustomed to it. We're not Minnesotans. I mean, I'm sure a few folks listening maybe grew up in Minnesota, Wisconsin, Upper Michigan, upstate New York. But for most of us, this is going to be a physical challenge, and so we just have to be smart about it. Absolutely. Ben, I know it's a very busy night. Can't thank you enough for your kindness, and uh, I'm sure we'll be in touch. Thank you so much. Have a great night, Scott. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.